Oxygen is metabolized throughout the body into carbon dioxide by oxidative phosphorylation. This carbon dioxide is then circulated via the bloodstream into the lungs, where it's expired and can be measured. This can be done quantitatively with an end tidal capnometer or capnograph. These are devices which measure the presence of CO2 passing by a sensor attached near the patient's airway or within the breathing circuit and report a value, usually in millimeters of mercury. This can be useful in several ways. For one, the presence of a cyclical waveform confirms communication with the ventilatory system and can be used to confirm endotracheal tube placement. We also know that the rate of generation of carbon dioxide is relatively constant. Therefore, with a constant ventilatory rate, the only changing variable is the rate of circulation, so we can use changes in quantitative end tidal capnometry as a surrogate for perfusion. More perfusion to the lungs will create a higher level of expired carbon dioxide, and less perfusion will create less expired carbon dioxide. Very low levels of expired carbon dioxide suggest poor perfusion and obviate the need to interrupt compressions for a pulse check. Prolonged periods of cardiac arrest with very low end tidal CO2 suggest that a return of spontaneous circulation is unlikely. Of course, other factors may create a low reading as well, including obstructive lung disease, hyperventilation, or a large portion of dead space from another cause of poor perfusion like a pulmonary embolism. Administration of sodium bicarbonate will increase the amount of carbon dioxide expired without reflecting an increase in perfusion. In addition to its utility as a surrogate for perfusion monitoring, end tidal CO2 may also serve as a reliable method to monitor ventilation for a variety of patients, including those at risk for airway obstruction or apnea. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how MetMastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About MetMastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.